indeed my life has been a miracle. Uh, I'm one of the least people that should have been alive this day because my youthful life was full of poor health. Yeah, my grade 12 downwards, my life was very poor. My health was very poor, I mean. But God has been so kind that I'm still alive this far and I know it's for a purpose. Yeah, and today may he use me to fulfill that purpose. I'm grateful group for those instruments playing behind me. I will always treasure your commitment to God's service. Um, this evening we are looking at a sermon bearing the title, There is a Resurrection Coming. Amen. There is a Resurrection Coming. There is a resurrection coming. Tu nina monzi mobotu ta tu yandi wa moniga pesi atu. Come on, Nisha, Botulanga, Monsi, Ombe, Botulanga, Monsi, Ombe, Tu Nina, Monsi, Mobotu, Tu. Langa o taliboni zionindi zina lya. Oh, can I never 
प्रथम हन्ने ओ था यो वी मांगु शीत सॉरी मो now come Lord Jesus let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you this evening for giving us this privilege one more time to share your word save a soul through this preaching of your word Amen there is a resurrection and that resurrection is coming. Death is real. Friends, are you listening? Death is real. I first felt the pinch of death when I was around grade five. I lost my younger brother, said from me. After me was a lady, a girl, who also now is late. But when I was in grade five, I lost a younger brother by the name of Costen. He was barely in grade two. We were living with our grandmother. Early in the morning, my grandmother woke me up, let's go to the clinic. Your brother is sick. My grandmother carried my brother on the back. We went to the clinic. Around 11 hours, my brother 
died. I didn't know what death was. I was a small boy. My mother, my grandmother cried, wept. My mother was far away. You know, in the village. By 16 hours, there was a burial. I told my grandmother, you are not taking Costen anywhere. I was a small boy. They said, stay aside. Your brother is dead. And that's how I lost my brother. The following day, early in the morning, I told my grandmother, bring my brother back. She wept and wept. Around 13 hours, people were still gathered for the funeral. I sneaked, I saw where they buried him. And I went to sit on the grave. They didn't see me. I started calling, Costen, come out. And the big people saw me, they ran to the grave and picked me up. I still remember very well. I asked them, why did you cover him with soil? I want him back. When I was in grade six, another death. This time it was my cousin. He was slightly older than me. I was now in grade six, he was in grade seven. Frederick. He was a very good football player. I can't believe it. And I couldn't believe it. With him, he was sick for one week, seven days. He also died. Very painful. Very painful. I have had a series of deaths since then. My family is almost finished. Death is painful. My mother had a sister an elder sister. Of course, my grandfather was a polygamist, polygamous man. Now, same father, same mother. My mother had one sister. And every baby she had died. She had seven pregnancies, of which all the babies died. At long last, there was a boy that grew, and I loved him so much. Freely. His name was Freely. My aunt used to live in Lusaka West. Then she shifted to Chinunyu, west of Kafue. The boy was in grade six. She went swimming with the friends in Kafu River. Of all the seven boys that went swimming, the crocodile came and picked the only child of my auntie. To date, we don't know where the body was taken. Whether the crocodile ate the whole body, we never buried my cousin. The only child of my auntie. Death is painful. Even now, come Lord Jesus. There is a resurrection coming. There is a resurrection coming.
Revelation chapter 20, verse 6. The Bible says, Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power. But they will be priests of God and of Christ. And they will reign with him for a thousand years. Praise be to God. There is a resurrection coming. Blessed and holy is the one who shares in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power. But they will be priests of God and of Christ and they will reign with him for a thousand years. Praise be to God. There is a resurrection coming. We read before that those that are redeemed of the blood of Jesus Christ they have been promoted they shall be promoted and they are already promoted they are priests and kings and the Bible is emphasizing the same those that have been redeemed those that have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ hallelujah somebody they are going to be priests they are priests today we are a royal priesthood hallelujah and they shall be kings for the bible says we shall judge even angels hallelujah somebody we can't wait for the day there is a resurrection coming my dear friends the bible is saying they are not subjected to the second death meaning the death we die now is the first death praise God the death which my brother Costen died is the first death the death which my cousin Frederick died is the first death the death which my cousin Frehley died is the first death praise God the death which Cornelius Matandiko died is the first death praise God the death which Lubas died is the first death praise God the death which your brother died is the first death the death which your mother died is the first death the death which your sister died is the first death the death which your husband died is the first death no one has died yet the second death we have a reason to smile now there is a resurrection coming there is a resurrection coming for they that have died the first death in Christ Jesus this death which we die now is not permanent no you're not listening the death we die now is not permanent this is just temporal and this death we die now takes both the righteous and the sinners it takes the holy and unholy it takes those that know Christ and those that hate Christ there is no demarcation for this death it takes all but there is a segregative death coming ahead which cannot touch the righteous there is a death coming now this death which we die now according to Jesus it is a sleep amen 
It is a sleep. John chapter 11, verses 11 through uh, 14. John chapter 11, verses 11 through 14. The Bible says in verse 11, After saying these things, he said to them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. In the tongue and language of our creator, Jesus, the death of those we take to Leopard's Hill, to Mutumbi, whichever burial site, this is a mere sleep. This is a sleep. Jesus is saying they are sleeping. Lazarus was sleeping. But lo and behold, when Jesus went to the grave, four days after the burial of Lazarus, the body was decomposed. But Jesus, pointing to the decomposed body, he says he is sleeping. He is sleeping. And that sleeping, where the maggots had taken advantage to eat Lazarus, Jesus had power over. Hallelujah. Then the Bible says he called his friend Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. And the Bible says he who was dead came back to life. There is a resurrection coming. If it is asleep, then they shall wake up. This death should not scare us. Hello? Don't be scared of this death. This death is just temporal. We should not be scared of it. I know, according to the statistics of Zambia, there are over 800,000 orphans in this country who have lost both father and mother. If you still have your father and your mother alive, praise be to God. But don't look down upon those that have lost both parents. Your turn will come also when you have no father. Your time is coming when you have no mother. You have no one to call mother. Death is painful. My dear good friends, there are all good reasons why we should not fear this death which we encounter today. Why shouldn't we fear this death? Psalm 116. Psalm number 116, reading stanza 15, what does the Bible say? Psalm 116, why shouldn't we fear this death? I know as we are preaching now, somebody's mourning a husband. As we are preaching now, somebody's mourning a sister. As we are preaching now, somebody's mourning a wife. As we are preaching now, somebody's mourning an uncle. Somebody now is being wrapped to the mortuary. As I am preaching now, tomorrow there will be a burial for somebody. Here is the word of hope for them that are mourning. Here is the word of hope to the widows. Here is the word of hope to the widowers. Here is the word of hope to the orphans. There is an assurance. Psalm number 116, stanza 15. The Bible says, precious, hallelujah, somebody there. Precious, you're not getting it. Precious 
in the sight of Jehovah is the death of his saints. Hallelujah. Precious in the, in, in the eyes of God are they that are in the caskets who died in the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember, a saint is somebody who accepted Jesus Christ. As many as have believed in him, he has given them power to be called children of God. Those that have believed in him, they shall be saved. Those that have believed in him, he shall come for them. And the Bible says, when such a people die, their death brings a smile in heaven. Why lest we are weeping and crying here on earth, we are throwing ourselves on the ground. We can't understand what is going on. In heaven, there are smiles, precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his saints. I want to challenge all of us, including myself, die. A smart death. You missed it. Die a smart death. Die in Jesus Christ. Die as a child of God. Don't die as a drunkard. Hello, somebody there. Don't die as a smoker. Hello, somebody there. Don't die as a prostitute. Are we listening, friends? Don't die as a wizard, as a witch. Don't die. Don't die outside Jesus Christ. The smartest way of dying is to die in the hands of the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the lowering of the casket that carries a saint. Now there are elders who die without Christ. Hey, hello somebody. There are preachers who die without Jesus. There are senior youths in the church who die without Christ. There are leaders in the church who have no Christ at the point of death. Remember death comes at any time. If you were to die tonight and by Monday your bury your day, Tuesday or bury your day, how would you die? Die a smart death. Die in Jesus Christ. Die a believer. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. How does the Bible define this death? which Christ says is a mere sleep. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. Let's hear what the Bible says. Verse 21, I read in your hearing. The Bible says, For to me to live is Christ. Amen. If I am to be alive in the morning, is Christ. If I am to live at noon, is Christ. If I am to be alive at night, is Christ. If I am to live at zero one, is every moment for me to live is Christ. In 2020, for me to live is Christ. In 2021, as it comes, for me to live is Christ. Whether I'm celebrating at a wedding, if I am alive, it is Christ. Whether I'm celebrating the new year, for me to live is Christ. Whether I'm celebrating Celebrating my birthday for me to live is Christ. Whatever situation is Christ. Where do you pack Christ sometimes? When you are busy with your girlfriend, where do you pack Christ? When you are busy with your boyfriend, where do you pack Christ? Paul says, for me to breathe, for me to be among the living, for me to walk, for me to blink, for me to move my hand, is Christ. It's Christ. It is Christ. Uh, for us, some of us, 
to live is to eat. To live is to enjoy in sin. But for Paul, he says, for me to live is Christ. And then he says, to die, it is gain. Hallelujah. To die, it is profit. Sometimes when Christians die, why do we even throw ourselves on the ground? Who cries over profit? If your husband who died was a Christian, stop crying now. If your wife who died was a Christian, stop crying now. If your child that died was a Christian, stop crying now. The Bible says such kind of death is gain. Amen. It is a profit in the eyes of heaven. In the same context of Psalm 116, 15. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. Revelation 14, verse 13. How shall, should we die? Revelation 14, verse 13. The Bible reads, And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Hello? Blessed are they that die in the Lord, covered by the Lord, connected to the Lord, having a living relationship with the Lord. Blessed are they that die whilst in the church, those that die whilst following Jesus Christ, those that die whilst lovers of the Bible, those that die whilst knowing and appreciating prayer. Such a people, their death, the Bible says, their death is a blessing. Those who die in the Lord, Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. Their good works follow them. Their good works follow them. I don't know what your works are like, but if you die in the Lord, blessed are you, for your works will follow you. There is a resurrection coming. There is a resurrection ahead. John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. There is a resurrection coming. There is a resurrection coming. John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26. I read again, the Bible says, Jesus said to her, talking to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. Jesus says he is the resurrection and the life. He who resurrected is our resurrection. He who is alive, he is alive for our sake that when we die, we shall live again. Whoever believes in me, though he die, he shall live again. Hallelujah. He that believes in Jesus, though he dies now, he shall live again. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Then there was a question posed. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Because it's difficult to believe. Especially when there are theories around concerning the dead. Where some people are telling you that when you die, you go to purgatory. Among the theories around where people are telling you when you die, you become a cow. 
Others say you, you, you reincarnate and you'll be born into a cat or a dog. There's another life. And yet, even as Christians, we are not together. Hello, somebody there. Even as Christians, there are a lot of debates concerning the dead. There are Christians who believe the dead can hear. On the burial day, when the body is there, they say, you are a good man. We love you. We miss you. Rest in eternal peace. That's devilish. That's the devil at work. You can't talk to the dead. If you are to give a speech at the graveyard, a speech on the burial day, it must be in the past. You, he was a good person. Not you were a good person. Who we'll miss you, mommy? Who we'll miss you, daddy? That's from the devil. The dead cannot hear. They are not conscious. We need to understand these things. Jesus tells us. My dear good friends. That everyone who dies in him shall live again. Everyone who believes will live again. I wonder how Job had this faith even before Jesus was born on earth. Job chapter 19 verses 25 to 27. Job chapter 19 verses 25 to 27 Job in his finished body all you could see were just bones he was to die he was near the grave and the friends said all things against him that he was sick because he was a sinner but Job said no no you are mistaken I know my redeemer hallelujah I know in whom I have believed. I know my Redeemer lives. Though I die, though I be buried, though I be eaten by worms, though my skin wends away, but I know I shall see him. Even I, with my own naked eyes, he shall appear. He shall come down to take me again. Job believed. In his God, that beyond the grave there is a resurrection. Beyond the grave there is life again to they that believe in Jesus Christ. The key is in believing. Allow me to re emphasize that there shall be two resurrections. Remember our key text from Revelation 20 verse 6. The Bible has told us, Blessed is that one who has a portion in the first resurrection. Hallelujah. Meaning there is another resurrection. There is a first resurrection, the resurrection of the righteous. There is another resurrection. Let's hear from John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verses 28 and 29. What did Jesus say? The one who is the life and the resurrection. The one who is the way and the truth. What did Jesus say? What did the truth himself say? Jesus Christ, what did he say? Verse 28 and 29, John chapter 5. The Bible says, Do not marvel at this. For an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs, hallelujah, who are where? 
in the graves, in the tombs, those that we have buried will hear his voice. Hallelujah! They shall hear the voice. Even if I die today, I shall hear his voice. Even if you die today, you shall hear his voice. There is a resurrection of the dead. The Bible tells us clearly, they shall hear his voice. And the Bible continues to tell us uh, that, and they shall come out. Hey, is it your Bible? Mark it. They shall come out of the grave. Those who have done good to the resurrection of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Those who believed in Jesus, those who confessed their sins, those who walked with Jesus, those who surrendered the things of this world, they shall resurrect to the resurrection of life, which is the first resurrection. Lord, remember me in that resurrection. And those who have done evil, eh, listen sinners now, listen evildoers, Listen liars, listen adulterers, listen drunkards, listen drug addicts, listen you corrupt people who are eating people's money, listen now, you thieves, listen now. The Bible says evildoers, they shall resurrect to the resurrection of damnation. Two resurrections. This is the second resurrection. Resurrection to damnation. The abusers of their dependents. Abusers of their nieces. Abusers of orphans. Abusers of widows. And to resurrection of damnation. Condemned forever to resurrections. If that was not clear to you, listen to what Daniel 12 2 says. What does Daniel chapter 12 2 tell us? There is a resurrection coming. 2, 12, 12 verse 2. Daniel 12 verse 2. The Bible says, And many of those who sleep in the dust hello hello friends many of those who sleep the other pastor said in the graves in the tombs this one is saying in the dust of the earth they shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt Two resurrections to life eternal and to hell. Two resurrections. Allow me to read this one as well. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 41 to 43. First Corinthians. There is a resurrection coming. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 41, verses 41 to 43, the Bible says, There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For star differs from star in glory. Now, this is a picture of the saved. Amen. When we are resurrected, when we enter the new Jerusalem, we shall all be in glory. Those of us that have walked with the Lord, we shall all be in glory. However, the glories will be different. Amen. There shall be some with the glory of the sun. Others with the glory of the moon. The others with the glory of the stars. But praise God, for all of us in Christ, it shall be glory. Glory. 
it doesn't matter even if I get the glory of the moon as long as I am in the new Jerusalem. Praise be to God. You need the glory. Now listen to this one. Listen to this one. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised imperishable. Hallelujah. That which we plant in the grave decays. Can be eaten by worms. Can be eaten by termites. Can be eaten by maggots. But that which you resurrect that which you shoot up, hallelujah, that which you break the grave, that new body, imperishable, never more to die. There is a resurrection coming. Verse 43. The Bible says, it is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. It is John who says, it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But when he does appear, we shall be like him. What a day. What life are you living? That's the penitent question to answer tonight. What is your lifestyle? How much of your life is invested in Jesus Christ? If you were to die tonight, which kind of resurrection are you taking out of the two? To eternal life or to hell? Which of the two? Your works, your works will follow you. Ah, you're not getting me. Your works, dear viewer, your works will follow you. My dear sisters, your works will follow you. Fellow men, your works will follow you. Fellow preachers, our works will follow us. Life of hypocrisy shall be revealed on that day. And the Bible is very clear. On that day, they shall say, didn't we perform miracles in your name? Didn't you do wonders in your name? Have mercy on us. It shall be too late. What we do now matters. For in the grave where we are going, there is no work. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10. Do whatever you are to do now with all your might. If you are to confess, confess now. For in the grave where we are going, there is no praising of God. For in the grave where we are going, there is no prayer. For in the grave where we are going, there is no singing to God. For the grave where we are going, when we are buried, too late, you can't confess your sin. Even if the living pray for you, they fast for you, they return an offering for you, it is just wasting time. It can't work. For Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5 and 6, the Bible says, The dead know nothing, and the memory of them is forgotten. They have no more portion on what is happening on top of the earth. When you die, it's too late. Mind how you end your life. You may be traveling to, to Siavonga. Kapiringos is waiting for you. How do you die? What kind of music are you playing in your car? 
if today were to be your last day on earth, what kind of a person will we be burying? In our eyes as human beings, we are burying a saint, but God knows our private lives. Die wisely. Die wisely. Death is coming. Death is coming. Some have died just with a headache. They have gone. They have gone. Death is coming. Others riding a bicycle. They have died. Death is coming. Others whilst eating, they got choked and died. Death is coming. Others slept in the evening. By morning, they were found dead. Death is coming. But how are you dying? God help us. <laughs> 